It is 9.15 a.m. in the Samburu National Reserve in Kenya. There's a very weak signal coming this way. Dr. Ian Douglas Hamilton leads a team of researchers on an elephant darting. She's under that tree, is that right? The work of Douglas Hamilton and his team from Save the Elephants to collar and track elephant populations to learn exactly what their habitat needs are is at the forefront of elephant conservation today. Can you shoot from that distance? Okay. Dodge in. Nice shot. We um, use our collars to actually monitor the elephants in great detail. We set them so that each elephant reports its position every hour on the hour, and then how they use the space monthly and seasonally. We're fundamentally a research organization, and in the case of elephants, what we've learned is that it all comes down to space. Now we take one of the tail hairs, a nice long one, because that's got the history of about the last year to year and a half. Along the length of the elephant's hair, you get laid down um, isotopes according to um, what they're eating. Whether they can indeed live within the places that we've confined them. For that, we need much better forms of land use planning, where the corridors of the elephants can be kept open and you get big and viable populations linked to each other by the vital corridors. Here come the family to greet their matriarch. They know that something went wrong. Look at that gesture where they tilt the head up and reassure each other. Douglas Hamilton devotes much of his research to understanding how elephants think and feel. They're very complex creatures with a complex range of emotions. They can be angry, they can be sad, they can be friendly to each other, or they can be quite aggressive. But why do I love them? I think I love them because of their altruism to each other. The younger you are, the nicer you get treated in elephant society. Ian Douglas Hamilton pretty much wrote the book on elephant behavior in the wild. The son of a Scottish fighter pilot, he was Oxford trained, and in the 1960s began to look at elephants. Nobody had done a behavior study in the wild. It wasn't even known what their basic social structure was. You often heard talk of a bull elephant with his family, but bulls don't lead families, so that was probably the first thing I learned, that leadership comes from the females. His approach to studying elephants was bold. And I remember just saying, that guy's crazy. He would walk right up to elephants. My God, what's he going to do? He ain't going to be around long. But from him, we all learned that animals don't want trouble. If you can read their signs and back off when you know you got to back off, it's fine. In a way, I use science as a passport to go and live in the beautiful and wild places that I wanted to live. And then I became a conservationist, because if they were going to survive, something had to be done to secure their future. By the early 1970s, Hamilton had become painfully aware of how elephant populations were being decimated by poachers in the ivory trade. The battle against the trade would consume much of the next 20 years of his life. And just about that time, everything changed for the elephant. The price of ivory went up through the roof, and suddenly, all across East Africa, we had fresh levels of poaching. It started in the remote areas of Kenya. It moved into the national parks. But because no one knew the exact populations of elephants, governmental leaders and others were skeptical that there was indeed a crisis for elephants. Hamilton spent much of the 1970s working on a Trans-Africa census, which revealed drastic decline in elephant populations. He then spent another decade flying anti-poaching missions and trying to convince anyone who would listen that the only solution to literally save the elephant was a worldwide ban on ivory. We were in the middle of a war. We had to learn how to use guns, and uh, um, his plane was shot at many times, hit. I was in the plane when he was hit. And um, yeah, it was a continuous struggle. But eventually, 
we managed to get these figures and eventually we managed to convince the powers above that they had to close the ivory trade. The worldwide ivory ban took effect in 1989. It was perhaps as strong an environmental protection statement as has ever been achieved. Elephant numbers increased almost immediately. It had been a 20-year battle. 20 years, largely away from his love of studying elephants up close. After the, what I call the war, he was able to set up Save the Elephants and work in a smaller area, and he's been able to start this research center, get a lot of young researchers, local people becoming assistant researchers, and I think this has given him the greatest satisfaction of all. I could never be just a hard-nosed scientist. The truth and beauty that science can bring out, there's no substitute for that. And the most exciting part of all the study is the analysis of their behavior and trying to render that into a new level of understanding of this alien consciousness and intelligence. It's a joy to be with the elephants 